Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button. Today on this video, I will be talking about tips that I would give for baby strippers. Beginner strippers, new strippers, strippers who are getting back in the game, or you know, just people who might want a couple of tips while I flat iron my hair. I'm probably gonna go back to the Dominicans, but not till like Monday. Cause I gotta, um, or maybe Sunday. If they're even open on Sunday. It might not even be open on Sunday. But I gotta, um, I'm getting my micro links put back in since my birthday festivities are over. Took the wig off. And it's time to go back to the micro links. I'm getting them shorter too because it's so hot outside. It makes literally no sense. You have to take three showers a day, one in the morning, one midday, and then one before you go to work. Just because. Or one, no, really what I'll do is I'll take one when I get up. If I run errands, I'm gonna take one when I get back home from running errands because I've been sweating and shit because it's so goddamn hot outside. And then I'm gonna take one um, in the morning when I get off of work. That's what I like to do. But um, yeah, I feel like it's still a piece of glue right here or something. But yeah, um, right now I'm working at Rumors in Atlanta. If you've been following me, you know this already. If you're new here, now you know. I used to work at Follies, rest in peace Follies. They're not open anymore for numerous of reasons, a number of reasons, not numerous of reasons. A number of reasons they are closed forever. No more follies. I need a rubber band. Hold on now. But yeah, um, I don't work at follies anymore. Obviously, because they're closed. And I work at rumors. Um, before that, I worked at like a couple of other clubs. But Follies was really like my main club. It's really where I kind of, you know, found myself, got in my rhythm, learned how to talk to customers, stuff like that. But um, yeah, I guess we'll just jump right into it. The first thing that you should do as a person who's never danced before or even a person who has danced has experienced whatever um i would just google like wherever you're i'm in atlanta so i'm pretty sure you can do this anywhere else also but i would google um strip clubs that's near me i will find like three to five and it's really easier if you're over 21, so you don't have to worry about if they accept girls who are over 21, because some girls let you dance at 18, but most of them it's 21. Um, yeah, if you're 18, it's harder. I started dancing before I was 21, and it definitely was harder to find clubs. But yeah, I would just Google some clubs around where I live at, Google strip clubs, see how far they are away, and um, see if they see if you need a permit to dance there. First of all, even before you get hired, I would see if um, you need a permit. Like, you can look on Instagram, look at that club's Instagram. It would say like permit required, or I don't know, just Google it. So look to see the age requirements and look to see if they have um if you need a permit and then after that i will go up there 
do not call and ask if they're hiring. And I say that because you could sound like me. My voice isn't very sexy over the phone, especially in the morning time. Like, I really don't know. Like, I don't know. You're just don't call. Just go up there so they can see your face. So they can see if they want to hire you. Like, don't call. And then, usually the people that answer the phones, they honestly be some haters. Like, the club, before I started dancing, the clubs that I would try to call, I would call them and be like, are y'all hiring? And Or are y'all hiring for dancers? And then be like, no, we're not hiring. And hang up the phone. Um, first of all, you don't even know what I look like. And second of all, I heard that y'all are hiring. So, what's the tea? And it just be a random, a random girl sitting at the front. It don't be no manager. It don't be, it just be a random girl who don't want no more girls, no more dancers to work there. So, definitely go up there. And when you do go up there, wear something kind of revealing wear a cute little dress like a short cocktail dress i think is what it's called you can wear a sundress wear some shorts with a crop top something anything that shows off your body like don't go up there in no sweatpants you don't it don't even matter how bad you think you are don't go up there in no sweatpants go up there with your if you wear makeup go up there with your makeup done the least you need to do is put some lashes on like me i hardly ever wear makeup the birthday i just had i got my makeup done but the birthday before that all my birthdays before that i didn't get my makeup done like so some people i get it some people just don't wear makeup i at least am gonna put on some lashes though and some eyebrows that's the I, bare minimum do your lashes and do your eyebrows. Bare minimum. Um, but yeah, if you're a makeup person, go get your makeup done before you go up there. Because first impression is everything. So you want to make sure that you are looking your best. Looking like you. Looking like they, they need you to work there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know make them make them want to hire you also when you go up there i would bring a pair of dance shoes and bring an outfit at least one outfit that you know you're gonna want to wear because what if they're like okay uh audition right now because some clubs do do that when i uh went to go get hired at onyx they um some clubs just do a body check and a body check is pretty much where They'll take you in the dressing room and you just have to get naked. Like, they want to see what your naked body looks like. That's why it's called a body check. But then some clubs make you audition. And you're going to need some shoes and an outfit to audition. And now, like I said, first impression is everything. Don't bring a little raggedy outfit that you just found or a little piece of lingerie. Go to, you know some dance stores i'm gonna talk about that in a minute but um yeah go to a dance your local stripper store get you a nice little outfit the people that work there they know you could you could ask them if you don't know what to get you know this is my first time dancing what kind of outfit should i get to audition i would suggest something with some rhinestones you can never go wrong with rhinestones um and the shoes, I'll put a clip in, or I'll put a little picture of the shoes that you could never go wrong in. These are my favorite shoes. I've been wearing these shoes for over a year now. I've gotten, I think I'm on my third pair of these shoes in a year, so they last pretty long. But to me, in my opinion, they're the most comfortable. And I have some big feet, like I wear a size nine. So if you have big feet like me or even you know you hoes with small cute feet these shoes are my favorite go-to they're very comfortable i can wear them all night and my feet are minimally hurting 
You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like I need to take my shoes off when I'm in a section and shit like that. These are my favorite shoes. Get these shoes. You can never go wrong with these shoes. And they go with pretty much every outfit. But, um, yeah. Then if you do, if you do do a body check or if you do audition, just try not to be nervous. Like, I know it's hard because even I still get nervous. Like, when I went to go uh, get hired at Onyx, I wasn't nervous, but I was more like anxious. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, everybody is there to get some money. Like, we're all here to do the same thing. So don't let the girls in the dressing room intimidate you. Don't let the house mom intimidate you. Don't let nobody intimidate you. Just go in there, do what you need to do, show out, and, you know, show them why they should hire you. You know what I'm saying? Usually, if you if you audition, they'll make you do two to three songs. The first song um, is with your clothes on. The second song, you are going to have to be naked. But you're working at the strip club, so you're going to have to get used to being naked. All that, I don't want to get naked. I'm nervous to get naked shit. Uh, what did they, they say? Scare money don't make no money. You're going to have to... Look. Go ahead and get naked. Whatever you gotta cover up. I um I now I get laser hair removal, but before that I was really self-conscious about um like some dark marks in my bikini area. Now they're gone, of course, because I've been getting laser, but I used to put makeup right there on it to make it to make the skin look even. If you gotta do that, do that. You know, anything to make yourself comfortable up there. So, do what you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? Where was I even going with that? I don't know. But yeah, don't let nobody intimidate you. Go up there, do your little stage set, get on down and wait for them to call you. You know what I'm saying? Also, another key thing is when you go in these places, in these uh, different clubs, Look at what the girls look like. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I say that, I mean different clubs have a different look that they go for. Like, when I was working at Follies, they liked, they favored light skinned girls. So, I mean, I'm not saying that you can't, you couldn't make no money being a dark skinned girl. But majority of the girls who worked there was Mexican girls, light skinned girls, and white girls. So if you feel like, take, just take the information how you will. But look at what the girls look like. Like, if you go to a club and you don't have your body done, and everybody in there has their body done, and that's gonna make you uncomfortable, don't work there. You know what I'm saying? Some girls are comfortable in their own body and being like, okay, I don't got my body done, but I'm still that bitch. Some girls aren't. Like, I don't know. It's just, it depends on you. Also, if you go in a club and it's mostly white girls, in my opinion, I mean, in my, yeah, in my opinion, I wouldn't work in no all white club. I don't want to hear that music, first of all. I don't want to be dancing on stage to the sweet home Alabama. I don't want to hear that when I'm on stage. I'm sorry. I want to shake my ass. I want to listen to the fucking future in golf and key Glock. I want to hear some good shit when I'm on stage. I want to hear that shit. Also, that will be what the customers are looking for. If the club is known for being a white club, customers are going to go there for white girls most of the time not saying and by all means i'm not saying you're not gonna make money if you're not the minority in is that what it is the minority majority y'all know what i'm trying to say i'm not saying that if it's a white club and you're a black girl you're not gonna make money in there because <coughs> if you're confident in your skin and you get your clientele up it's not gonna matter about what the girls look like in there you gonna Come in there and make your money, do what you do, and leave. Also, you got to see what kind of club it is. Like, 
Um, how can I put this in the best way? Some clubs are known to make most of their money in the VIP by doing extra stuff or whatever y'all want to do in the VIP. If you're not comfortable with that, I wouldn't work there. It's a few clubs on Force Industrial that most of their money is made in the VIP. If that's not what you want to do, or if you don't want to hear niggas asking you to go to VIP all day and that's going to piss you off and ruin your mood, don't work there. And you can ask these questions when you go there. Oh, do y'all have VIP? Do, you know, shit like that. Don't be afraid to ask questions when you go in there. You're going to be working there. So, you need to be informed about what's going on in your potential home club or your club that you're going to be working in. Um, but yeah, look at, I always look at what the girls look like in there. Also, like not even just ethnicity, but body type. If it's a club full of big girls and that's going to intimidate you and you're 120 pounds, I wouldn't work there. I would find you a club that has more slim girls if you're not comfortable with that. Some girls might be comfortable being the only skinny girl in a in a thick girl club. If it's a if you if you know you don't have your body done and you don't plan on getting your body done no time soon, don't work at a club that is gonna bother you that everybody has their body done. Like I said, some girls are okay with that, but some girls it gets to them. Like damn, you wasn't thinking nothing about no BBL. Now you want a BBL because you're in a club and you feel like you're not making enough money because all the girls who got their body done is making money not saying nothing's wrong with people getting their body done not saying nothing's wrong with anything i'm just saying do what you will be comfortable with doing and i'm gonna just leave that at that um what else what else oh yeah so um some dance stores that's in atlanta that i like to go to to get my outfits um i like to go to lick that's in Atlanta, L-I-K. I like to go to Looks of Atlanta. That's in like Buckhead, Midtown area. What is this? I like to go to, um, it's another one. Hi, baby. Excuse me. Sit down. You wanna sit down? Yeah. Okay. Sit down right there. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, it's another dance store. It's on Beaufort Highway by Follies, like two minutes away from Follies. But I don't even go that way no more because it's so much traffic over there. What is that called? Y'all comment down below if y'all know what dance store I'm talking about. It's on Beaufort Highway right next to Follies. It's, oh, it's Stripper Store USA. That's what it is. I'm not sure if they're still there, but I love, I used to love their outfits. And they would have good deals. They would give you like two outfits and some shoes for $150. And if you know, you know, that is a good ass deal. Cause shoes alone gonna run you at least bare minimum $100. The shoes that I just showed y'all, them black shoes, them shoes are $100. And I'm surprised they're still that cheap because everybody wants to wear them but um another store is class hour that's on old national you can never go wrong with that they got shoes in there and they got outfits but yeah go in there don't be one of them girls that goes in there wearing your mom's shoes your mom's old heels in there because you don't know what kind of um what kind of uh heels to wear don't be wearing no victoria's secret bra and panty set uh-uh go to a dance store and you can you don't got you don't got to get a 200 dollar outfit and 300 dollars shoes you can go in there and get you some 50 60 dollar shoes and a 50, 50 30 35 dollar outfit they got little cute little net outfits some of them come with rhinestones some of them don't but they got they got, you know, stuff for people who are just starting out that still makes you look like you, you know, you know what you're doing. 
But yeah, make sure you get you at least to start off. I would say at least like three to five outfits, at least, cause you don't want to wear the same outfit all night. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's gonna be hot. You gonna be sweating. Belly. Shit like that. It's your belly button. It's your belly button. Um. So yeah. Hmm. But um so after you get hired what I like to do when I go to a new club, I don't be trying to get to know the dancers. I don't really be talking to them. Uh the only people that you need to be talking to is your house mom and your managers, in my opinion. The girls if you have a good energy about yourself, girls is gonna talk to you. And even then, you can still stay to yourself. Not in a rude way, like, bitch, I'm better than you, I don't wanna talk to you, but just, you know, some girls like to go in there and make their money and go home. You're not in there. It's a spray wheel. Oh, You're not in there to make friends. It's a spider It's not recess in high school. It's a spider wheel. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you're not in there to make friends, and them hoes is not your friends nine times out of ten anyway. They're gonna steal your shit out your locker, or they're gonna see somebody steal some shit out your locker and not tell you what it is. Um, yeah. Bitches like to act like your friend in the locker room, but then when you come down to a customer, they're gonna act like they don't even know you, or you know. You dancing for so called their customer and now they're um they mad at you, they ready to fight. Like, uh uh. At the end of the day, if they're not your family, they is not your friends. And you don't need friends in the club anyway. You're not in there for that. In there to make some money, go the fuck home. Don't be in there trying to keep kids up. Oh girl, da -da -da -da. get in there so up, put your clothes on. Try not, I try not to even be in a dressing room like that. I hate being in a dressing room. It's hot. Everybody's yelling. Everybody's drunk. Everybody's in the way. I don't even like being in a dressing room. Go in there. Okay, Carter. Go in there. Make your money. Push it up. Go home. Huh? You want to get down? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Go down. Go ahead, get down. Okay. Let's see what else. Um. Um. Also, try to get to know the rules of the club. One time I worked at this club that you, uh, each dance that you did, you have to get, you had to give 10% to the club. So if dances are $20, you had to give the club $10. If you, uh, when you get on stage, no matter how much money you made, you have to take, uh, your top off after the first song your bottoms off at the second song no matter how much money's on stage no matter how many customers is in there you had to um tip the bar and i don't y'all i don't even drink you had to tip the bartenders um i forgot it was it was so many rules at that club that i wish i would have known beforehand because i wouldn't have even wasted my time working there it's a good thing that i didn't waste my money on a permit Cause you didn't need a permit at this club, but y'all in the country ass clubs, way out in the boondocks, never again. But um, yeah, get to know the rules of your club. Get to know your DJ. That's a big key thing. If you well, if you like to get on stage, even if you don't like to get on stage, like. 
some girls be like, oh, I don't want to get on stage because I don't be knowing, I don't, I don't do pole tricks or I don't know any pole tricks. It doesn't matter if you know pole tricks. Like, even if you work at a club like Magic City where the girls like to do all kind of shit on the pole, you can still get on stage, dance, and make your money on stage. Like, you don't need to know pole tricks to get on stage. And I cannot stress that enough because I I know how to do pole tricks. When I used to work at Polly's, I used to be swinging across that thing like a monkey. But now that I'm at Rumors, I don't know. I uh, When I got my, uh, my breast lift and reduction, I couldn't do pole tricks for like six months. So I never got back to doing them. Or when I tried to get back doing them, I was weak as hell. So ever since then, I just haven't been doing pole tricks. And I still be making a bag on stage. So it doesn't matter if you do pole tricks or not. Get on stage. Because you could go from making, say you have, say you made $700 uh, that night. Say it's a, it's a Thursday night, you done made $700. You could have made 1000 getting on stage, even if you... Gotta get on stage twice, 150 and 150. Now you went from $700 to $1,000 because you got on stage two times. Like, you can never go, even if uh, some clubs on the weekdays, you can just get on stage whenever you want to. And then some clubs, it's always a rotation. But when you, if your club doesn't have a rotation or it's a, it's a weekday and they're not doing rotation, and you're not dancing for nobody, get on stage. You never know who is looking. When I'm not doing nothing in the club and I'm just sitting there on my phone or whatever and I feel like I've been on my phone for too long, I'm getting my ass on stage. And nine times out of 10, somebody's gonna be like, hey, come holla at me when you get off stage. And guess what I do? Go holla at them when I get off stage. <laughs> like, easy. They might not make, they may have seen you walking around, but they may not have seen how you shake your ass. And now that they saw that, they want you to come shake your ass for them. Like, I don't know. Or maybe they didn't see you walking around. Now that you're on stage up high where everybody can see you, now they're like, hmm, where you been? Cause I know for me, I'm kind of shorter. So, Niggas might not see me walking around the club or maybe I don't get a chance to walk around the club or don't get a chance to walk over where you are looking at me and I get on stage and nigga might be like, where the fuck you was at all night? What? I'm making a video. A video? Yeah, a video. You wanna hug? Okay, thank you. I love you. You wanna go sit back down? Yeah. Oh, get to know your DJ. Because, and also get to know your DJ slash tip your DJ. Because your DJ, when niggas want to get a song played or they want to get their song played, they're going to go where? To the DJ booth. The DJ can see, they and niggas talk to the DJ. Oh, I'm looking for this kind of girl. I'm trying to spend this amount of money, blah, blah, blah. Or they're gonna play, the DJ's gonna play their song when, and they want, the DJ's gonna play a song knowing that they're gonna spend some money. And if you have a good relationship with a DJ, the DJ may or may not call you on stage when their song is playing. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't have a good relationship with your DJ, if you don't take your DJ, you can go ahead and Papa, kiss that goodbye. That'll never be you. But I always have a good relationship with my DJ because if I don't do anything in that club, I'm going to get on stage at a good time. Yes, I am. And also, have a relationship with your DJ so you can get on stage at a good time. If the DJ sees that niggas is throwing money on stage, niggas is with the stage, he'll call you on stage. But if you don't tip your DJ or, you know, you just tip your DJ $5 at the end of the night, 
He not gonna call you on stage when niggas is throwing money on stage. He gonna call you on stage at the beginning of the night. Ain't nobody really in there like that. So yeah, I always say when I was working at Follies, we would have to give the DJ 10%. So I'm used to doing that anyway. If I make, if you make $500 that night, I mean, if you make $500 in one night, what's the problem with giving your DJ, not even 10%, let's say less than that. What's the problem with giving your DJ $30? I would probably give the DJ $50, but that's because of what I just told you. I want to get on stage at a good time. I want to, you know what I'm saying? Or even if sometimes I might just have a set price, I mean, a set number of what I'm going to give my DJ every night. Even if it's a slow night, even if it's, you know what I'm saying? I'm never going to give my DJ less than $20. Ever. Even if I make $100 at night, I'm still going to give my DJ $20. Because I know he's going to look out for me and make sure I make some money the next day or any other day. So you have to help people help you. This all that makes sense if y'all if y'all get what I'm saying. A lot of girls be walking out on their DJ and be wondering why they don't ever get called on stage at a good time. You don't tip your DJ. That's why. But um yeah. Also, um, bring your tip out ahead of time. Most clubs, you do have to pay your tip out ahead of time, but some clubs, like the one that I work at, my home club, you can pay your tip out at the end of the night. But me personally, I don't like worrying about, oh, I need to hurry up and walk around. I need to get on stage, try to make my tip out back. I don't want to... I don't want to have to worry about none of that. I want to give you my little sixty dollars, a hundred dollars, one twenty-five, whatever tip out is that night. I want to hurry up and get that out the way, so I can just chill. Who want to be worried about making a tip out back? Not me. Surely don't. So yeah, I hope that. What I say helped y'all. If y'all are trying to be a dancer, if y'all have any more questions for me, or if I didn't touch on enough and you have some more questions, whatever, just comment down below. And I probably am going to end up making a part two to this video because I'm going to be like, oh yeah, I forgot that. Or yeah, I forgot that. I know I'm going to end up making a part two. So, yeah. I hope y'all enjoyed this part and I hope it helps whoever is out there trying to start being a dancer. Also save your money. Try to save your money because you're going to make it. And just as quick as you make it, that's as quick as you're going to spend it. Don't nobody spend money more than strippers. I'm convinced. Not no drug dealers, not scammers. Nobody spend more money than us. And if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. But yeah, y'all um like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And y'all have a great one. <laughs> I'll put a clip in where I got that. But I live, y'all. Y'all right, one.